we're on 42B2 uh, at the very top of that. So the Mishnah said was is was talking about for a young woman who was raped or seduced that the father gets uh the the fifty shekel and and boat and boshes of gam what and for a, a raped woman also the pain what happens if uh the father died before it got paid or what if the father died before um before the based in case happened. So would she keep it for herself, or if it's considered the father's uh, uh, money, would it go to the to to his heirs? Which if if he has a daughter, it would go to. I mean, if he only has daughters, part of it would go to her. But if he has sons, uh, according to the basic Torah law, the the Yerusha goes to the sons, not to the daughters. So the Mishnah says that if the case came to basin before the father died so the father gets it if the father died they go to the, her brothers meaning his heirs if the based in case started only after he died then she gets to keep it then the second case in the Mishnah was what if uh, she became a Bogaris meaning the six month period of being a Nara uh, concluded so so if the, the based in proceeding started before she became a Bogaris and just to remember, a based in proceeding is much shorter than uh, than a trial usually, because I'm not even sure if they would have. I mean, if if there was a capital case, you would have to sleep on it, and and they would they wouldn't render the verdict on the same day. They'd have to wait to the next day. But it seems that cases were relatively quick, though the one case, and I shouldn't say the one case, a situation where like we saw. Um, in the first parak, whereas if the husband felt that she wasn't a, a virgin, so the question was, is she permitted to be married to him or did she commit adultery after the heiress and before Nesuin? So it needed to come to Basin and Basin would kind of put out some type of uh, thing. We want our witnesses there. You know, does anyone know anything about it? I don't know how long they would wait and things like that. Uh, I don't remember which Rishon says, but one of the opinions is the whole ceremony for Egla Rufa is that because of this big hubbub when there's someone dies in between two cities and the Zakanim come and they and they have to and they have to kill the the calf. So the reason for the whole ceremony is that the publicity will bring uh someone who knows something about it, a witness. Uh so a witness would come. How long would they wait? In other cases, I don't know. So So, so in a regular case, so it started before, while she was still a Nara before she became a Bulgaris, and the based in rules that that uh, the other guy was guilty, so she get the so that he has to pay these payments. So the payments go to the father. If the father died, they go to the to the brothers. But if the whole based in started after she already became a Bulgaris, they're herself. But Rabbi Shimon says, if she didn't collect before the father died, then she gets to keep it. It sounds like it doesn't go to the brothers. So Ace of A, so, so the Gemara said first that, yeah. So the, there's a Mah, So there's a principle, there's a couple principles going on. So one is motive knas pater. If someone admits that they owe what a, a knas is a fine, they uh you you're exempt because the Pasik and Mishpatim says, Ashir Yarshiyun Elohim. The basin has to find you guilty in order to pay uh a knas. And another pr principle is is that um uh under most cases, something that that based and says that you have to pay, but it hasn't been paid yet, is not subject to inheritance. Meaning if, if the father has money, so that goes to inheritance. 
But this debt that the base in passing against someone to the father, if the father dies, it doesn't usually go, uh, it's not considered property that would go into, that could be inherited. So the question on Ahmed Aleph was, if I asked Rabba, if someone said, if, if a guy, a father said to someone else, you raped or you seduced my daughter, and he took him to Basin, and and uh, and he denied it, and he says, I make you take a shvua, an oath, and he and he accepts the oath, he takes the oath, and then later he agrees that he really, he admits that he lied falsely, he's obligated to pay a penalty. So if you had swore falsely about money you owed, uh, you have to pay a 20% penalty and you have to bring a korban. Rabbi Shimon uh, says you're exempt because you don't have to pay a knas from your own admission. So even though you swore falsely, but the money isn't obligated, you're not obligated to pay the money, so you don't have to pay a penalty on money that you don't owe. So if I ask Rabba, and this is on Membe Zamaral, um, what if the father said, he he said these things, but in addition, he said, I already took you to Basin, and the Basin found you guilty, and obviously you haven't paid me yet. And he says yes, and he swore. What would Rabbi Shimon hold? Would Rabbi Shimon hold once the Basin obligated him to pay its considered a monetary payment, you know? Or since it was originally a knas, Rabbi Shimon would still say that the guy who swore falsely will not have to pay the penalty. So Rabba said it's considered mamon, and uh, and he would be chayev to pay the penalty and to bring a korban for swearing falsely. So Ezevei Abaye asked a question against Rabba's uh, uh, teaching that we just that I just mentioned from our Mishnah. Rabbi Shimon Omer, even though he speak a ligbo such a mesa av harein shalatzma. Rabbi Shimon says if he wasn't able to collect before the father died, then she gets to keep the money. Vimarik the mamon havi laharsho levana. And if, according to the, you hold that it's um, really a monetary payment, once it's a monetary payment, it's part of the father's regular assets, and it should go, like all his other assets, through, through the regular Yerusha inherit, inheritance situation and go to his to his son, so the sis, the brothers of the girl. Uh, so why would the Mishnah say, Rabbi Shimon say, that uh, that the money goes to her, it would belong to the father. So Amar Rava, Hai Mili Milsa Kashabe Rabba Rav Yosef Esmer Tartin Shanin. So Rava says something very interesting. So Rabba was the Rosh Yeshiva for about 22 years, and then he died, and then Rav Yosef became the Rosh Yeshiva. And Ra and uh Rabba was known as the Oker Haram. He he was able to think of sharp. Uh, logical arguments in any direction, and Rav Yosef was called the Sinai, Har Sinai. He knew everything. So there's a different type of learn. Some people learn; they know so much, so they'll quote you a source for what they for for something. But an Oker Harim, someone who could would literally Oker Harim means you could uproot mountains and then grind them together. You could take any idea. You could take ideas, and then based on the ideas, make logical arguments and stuff based on that, and then and then make an answer based on that. So this machlokas really was a was a difficulty that Rabban Rav Yosef had for twenty two years. Oh, 
Oh. Oh, I, I just have to check if I'm doing my work right now. Me too. This is Google, okay? Oh. 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 Sorry. What? It is. Look. 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 Listen to it. You want this? Oh. So this was a machlokas for 22 years between Rabbi and, and, and Rav Yosef. So Rabbi was Rosh Hashanah for 22 years, and then he died, and, and then Rav Yosef was Rosh Hashanah for two years. There was some thing, Rav Yosef heard a dream or something for, from someone else, and they said that Rav Yosef would be Rosh Hashanah for two years, so he didn't want to be Rosh Hashanah. There's some, I, I don't remember uh, the details. Below Ifrik, they didn't have an answer. At the Yosef, Rav Yosef, Uperke, until... After Rabbi died, Rabbi Yosef became the Rosh Hashiva, and then he answered it. Shani Hasam, he said, the case of our Mishnah is different. That the man who lays with her is going to give 50 shekel to the to the father. So the word Vinasan. So it's not the father's except from the time it was given over. So there, so the Chikama Rabba Mamona Havi Larisha Luana, and when Rabba says that the case was considered Mamon uh, uh, when it went to Basin, and that the father would in, would it would be part of the father's estate, and if he died, it would go to the sons in inheritance. Bishar Knasos. That means for a different Knas. Let's say he had uh, a cow that was stolen, and someone stole the cow and butchered it, so they have to pay five times back. So a knas like that is something that that once based in Paskins, if if it hadn't been paid yet and the and the victim died, so then his sons could collect the the amount of that cow times five, but not for a case of of uh, of onus umafate. Elameata gabi eved kesef shoshim shkolim yitain lado ladona fachinami lo zifz zotar elado elmishasasina. But in the case, it doesn't, you don't like it? Okay. Okay. This is the last one, okay? So the question is, so when the Pusik says that you pay a knas for if you're if your animal kills an Evid. So it doesn't matter if the Evid was a highly skilled Evid and not skilled Evid, you pay a flat 30 shekel fine. So according to that, because the Pasuk there says, Vinasan, uh, it's, excuse me, it says, Yi ten up. He shall pay, he shall give it to the master. So in that case also, you should say that 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 if someone's uh, evid was killed by uh, an axe or whatever, and the the owner of the axe didn't pay it before the owner of the of the of the slave died, uh, that should not be inherited by the sons either. But 
why but we never heard of such a distinction so the Gemara says yitain lechod venasan lechod so it's true that yitain and venasan have the same root but he only said this rule about the actual word venasan because venasan is one handing over to the other yitain means he will give so it's slightly different then. so because it says venasan it actually has to be handed over uh to be his but it wouldn't be transferred in inheritance but any other class would. So we had just mentioned the case about if you uh, swore falsely, if someone swore falsely to the accuser, the accuser's father, uh, and then he denied, Rabbi Shimon would say that um, that the Pasuk explicitly says that he denied uh, about owing the thing. So Tamalamar Vinasan Why 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 did he answer that Vikhesh is a special rule of denial? He should have said that it's 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 a not because of the principle of the word Vikhesh in the Pasuk we saw last week, but it should be Vinasa. Because it it's not the father's until it actually gets given over to the father. So Amarabah Kiitzrich Vikhesh Kagon Sha'amda Badinu Vagro Mesa. Because there's uh we need the Xerasa Kas of the teaching in the Pasuk of Vikhesh to tell us in a case where they had the base in case and then she became a bogaris so she became more than 12 and a half and then she died before the money came the hasam ki kayaris avia minadida kayaris so when when uh, that case the father will inherit his daughter cuz she didn't have any kids mean uh, mina kayaris he's getting it through her so then the gemara says yahi yato ela shehin knas mamanhu why did uh, the brisa say it's excluding things that's knas if this is a situation where the basin already took place it's not knas anymore because according to the way Rabbah at, uh, explained uh, uh, Rabbi Shimon's opinion, once the basin would have said that it was asking that it's chayev, it's not the knas anymore. It's not a fine. Now it's money that they owe. It's true that it originally, the reason he owes it is because, where are you going, Morty? You don't like it? So give it to me. So even though it was originally a knas, but once Basin said you have to pay it, it's not a knas anymore. Now it's a monetary obligation. So Amar Rav Nachman Bar Yitzchak Yitzu Elo She Ikar Knas. So the way I just explained it is how the Gemara answers. So Rav Nachman Yitzchak says it excludes things that originally were knas. Once Basin uh, obligated him to pay it, it's true. It's just a monetary payment, but because it it uh, it initiated uh, uh, from its beginning as a fine. They would not. That's why he calls them knas, even though they're not really knas anymore. But they were originally knas. Yeah, you could sit there. Asabe. Now Abai asked for a different question. Rabbi Shimon Poter Sheinu Mosham Knasa Piyatzma. So if the guy swore when the the girl's father said that you uh, seduced my daughter, raped her, and, and you and uh, he denies it, and he says I make you swear, he says I accept the the oath. And then later he denied that he had swore falsely, that really he did uh, a rape her or whatever. Rabbi Shimon says he doesn't pay knas uh, based on his own admissions. The only reason there is because they hadn't gone to Bastin yet. But if they already went to Bastin, because and now, if according to what you're saying is right, that now it's considered a mamon payment, the monetary payment, once Bastin was obligated him, Rabbi Shimon exclude, exempted him from paying the fine uh, the fine and the korban. But in this case, now he should even have to be, give a korban. And that's not with what, what Rabbi Shimon uh, said. Yes. So, Rabbi Shimon Ledivrim de Rabbanu Kamar so Rabbi Shimon's reasoning wasn't his own shita. He just argued according to the uh, according to the Rabbanan's logic because he was arguing with them. According to my own opinion, even though the ba- they already went to basin and basin exempted him to pay, he's exempt. The pas- the Torah exempts him. Rachmana means Hashem in the Torah. The Torah excluded him from having to bring the korban because of the gzeres because of avachichesh. But according to your opinion, you should at least admit, admit to me and agree with me that that if they didn't go to Basin yet, when the girl's father is saying, you owe me money, that is a knas payment. 
uh, 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 he's 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 trying to get a knas out of him. And now we turn to Mem Gil Ahmed Aleph, Umoda Beknas, Pater. And someone who agrees for in a knas is Pater. So that's why this question against uh, Rabbi Shimon isn't a question. Because when the way Rabbi Shimon worded it in the Mishnah was according to the opinion of the Rabbanan on whom he was arguing. But it wasn't a a, a, a full expression and description of his own shita. Rabbanan Savri, but the Rabbanan hold who argue on him hold ki katava, boshes of gam katava. So when the father confronted the guy and says, you, you seduced my daughter, so you owe me money. So the Rabbanan hold, he was primarily uh, confronting him to get receive the payments of the Boshes of Gam, her humiliation and her devaluation. And those are mama. So therefore, uh, the, the, the regular love of having to pay a fine and to bring a Corbin for swearing falsely should apply to this man. So, what's the machlokus between uh, the, the the nexus of the argument between uh, Rabbi Shimon and the Chachamim here? Amar Papa, Rabbi Papa says Rabbi Shimon suffered shavik in it low shavik inish midi the kids with have a midi go kids. Because what's going on here? There's the fi- there's a, a a fixed payment of fifty shekel that the guy would owe if the father's claims are true, and then there are some variable payments that would depend on the subjective uh, case of this particular girl. How much her uh, her humiliation would be, how much the uh, her devaluation would be, and if it was a case of rape, how much her pain was. Those are subjective things. So if a, if someone would go after money, they would go after the sure thing first. The well, not the sure thing, but the set amount, the fifty shekel. So Rabbi Shimon holds they'd go after the fifty shekels, so they'd confront him. It's about a knas, so it's fundamentally a knas. And the Chachamim hold, well, if I confront him about the Knas and he would admit it, then I'm going to get nothing. Because Moda Knas, someone who admits to being liable for a Knas, that they did that action, they're exempt. So the Rabbanan say, they, the Rabbanan says the Rabbanan hold that they specifically would go after the Boshes of God because if they if the father would go after, confront the guy for him to pay the Knas, and then the guy admitted, he wouldn't pay the 50 shekel anymore. So he's taking so he's taking something which he would be able to collect on. He's the father wouldn't take the the, the tack of oh no Morty please don't open. He wouldn't take the tack of taking something that the that the other guy could exempt himself from by admitting to. Ravina So the halacha is is that when a woman dies, uh, uh, who's married, the so. According to Torah law, which is very different than uh, than civil law here, the sons inherit the father's estate. So, but because of the ksuva, the father has to, excuse me, the sons have to support their mother. That's part of the terms of the ksuva. So they also would have to support their sisters if they had unmarried sisters. So the question is, if she's being... You know her room and board. She's 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 being housed and clothed and fed from her father's estate, but she has a job. Who, who did she get to keep her wages, or do the brothers get to keep her wages? The Malcolm Av Kaimi. Do we say that the sons are in the place of the father? And just like when the father's alive, we saw a few weeks ago her uh, wages go to the father. So are they considered in a place of the father? And now that they're supporting her, they would get her wages. Or is it not similar because the father is uh, giving her food and clothing and shelter from his own money and her brother. And so therefore, because it's from his own money, he gets to get her wages. But when it's the brothers paying for it, the brothers aren't paying it out of their own pocket. They're paying it out of the father's estate. So since it's not, they're not out the money for it. They don't get her wages uh, uh, when she earns them. So Amarle he answered Tinisua. There's a mission about this. A widow gets uh, supported from the property of the orphans, meaning the estate of the dead of her of her late husband, and Masidel Shalahen, and her. Wages, if she would, you know, have a job of work, do it would go to her sons. So, 
just like she's getting supported from her husband's, her late husband's estate. And, and so they're her children who are the inheritors, the heirs of the estate, get uh, get to keep her wages. So to a daughter, the same thing. The brothers who, uh, who would be supporting her from the father's estate would keep her wages. But the Gemara does not like that. Me, Dami, are these cases similar? So the man doesn't want his wife to get extra profit. But but uh, but the man would be in favor of his daughter getting uh, profit. Meaning, uh, he wants to leave as much money as possible to his sons, not his wife. So they're supporting him. They're supporting her. So they should get. So the the husband the the dead husband slash father would want the sons to get to be able to keep the. No, we cannot open that. We can't open it because it's. We're going to lose the pieces. We don't want to lose the pieces. Here, do you want to play with my keys? Okay. Um, so, Irish Girl has a footnote here. The second to last, no, the last paragraph. A father is encouraged to provide his daughter with a dowry in order that she'll be a desirable choice for men seeking to marry. Gamora Balon 52b. So it's actually more than that, that there's. Do you want something else, Morty? Let's go bring it from a Gamora lower down, but there's a Gamora in Kedushin at like Daflamid Aleph or, or so. That saying that uh, a father has to spend money on his daughter so she looks good and she'll have a good dowry so she'll have she'll be in a better position to get a good shidduch. So uh, Archibald Ar could have quoted another source than the one they than the one they quoted. So he would he he'd be more in favor of his of his daughter being able to get a bigger a portfolio of assets for herself because she'll have better uh, marriage prospects. If she has more money, she'll have a bigger dowry, so it's more. Uh, she'll be more uh, uh, in demand. So the Gemara, then the Gemara says, But this implies that his daughter is in a better is is that he would want better for his daughter than for his widow. But Rabbi Abba said in the name of Rabbi Yossi, "Asu almana eitzel habas keves eitzel achim." The Chachamim treated the widow compared to the daughter like a daughter compared to the brothers, meaning the brothers are the owners of the estate and she is dependent on them. So and so if the Almana Eitzel Abbas is like the so the so the so the Chachamim saying that we have to treat the widow better than the daughter. And if you and if you say, like the Gemara just tried to say, that uh the, that the the wife works the the her sons would get to keep the uh her wages watch your fingers and but but the daughter wouldn't that makes it sound like the daughter's in a better situation than than the than the widow but that's the opposite of of what the halacha is hold on here i get that what we just tried to say is that the daughter, the husband would want the daughter to be able to keep her money to be better. But, uh, um, but Rabbi Abbas and Nimr Rabbi Yossi, that Chazal said that the, 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 just like the, the sons are in a better situation than the, than the, than their mother, the widow, the, their mother is a better situation than the daughter. So that's in conflict with the way we just explained this halacha. Uh, we're talking about a case where there's a very small estate. So what does this mean? So Rashi says, Nechasen Muatim means the estate is not enough to support them for 12 months. So in such a case where the estate, where the estate isn't big enough to uh, to support them for 12 months, the daughter gets paid out of the money that's there, and the sons have to go door to door, even door to door, to ask for tzedakah. They have to beg, but the, their their sister doesn't have to beg. 
just like the the daughter in uh in comparison to her brothers uh she would get supported from the assets that uh, that the father left in his estate estate and those brothers would have to beg but if if there's not enough to support the the daughter either but there's enough to support the mother the mother would get to to get supported by what little money the estate has and the daughter would also have to uh the bag so we see in this case that the wife is in a better situation than the daughter so the says in regard to having to suffer this indignity of having to beg he'd rather his daughter beg before his wife begs but in regard to who who he who could amass a bigger portfolio he'd prefer his daughter to amass a bigger portfolio than his wife so if his wife would, so if the if the estate has enough money to support everyone for a while, if the wife works, she has to give her wages to the sons who are in, who are the owners of the estate. But if the sister works, she does not have to put the, give the money the, her wages to her brothers. So in this way, she could start as her own savings account, and so when she gets married, she'll have a bigger dowry. Masriv Yosef, Rav Yosef asks, Masidel Mitziasa Afapish Lo Gavsa. So there's a brisa that, or our Mishnah says that if she, her earnings, her wages, umtsiyasa, and if she found a lost object, so normally the father would get both of those. But if the father died, so even though they weren't collected, if the father died, they go to the brothers. The reason that it goes to the brothers is because she earned this money, she earned these wages while the father was still alive. Uh, but that implies that if she had earned these wages after the father dies, they wouldn't go to the son. She would be able to keep them. So my love, Nizonis, can't we explain the Mishnah is talking about a case where she is being supported by the estate of her father. And and uh, the, and yet the Mishnah says, we make a dig from the Mishnah that she gets to keep her own. She gets to keep the Misa. So the Gemara says, no. Lo, Nizonis. No, the Mishnah is talking about a case where She's not being supported by her brothers. So meaning that there wasn't enough money. So they don't, they don't, and there's not even enough money for her. So she's not being supported. So she doesn't have to give her money to the brothers. But then the Gemara says, If she's not being supported by the father of state, what's the Chiddush? Zancha. Even according to the opinion that a master can tell his Evid Kanani that you'll work and I'm not going to support you, Kanani, that's only for a not Jewish slave, Imach, that it doesn't say with you, because it says by uh, Evid, by an Evid Ivri that he has to live at Shnas Hayavel Yavod Imach. He's going to work with you. So there's a drasha, Imach be Achila, Imach Bishtia, or he has to be with you for eating, with you. So there, there's a famous uh, chazal, a drasha, that says if you have one uh, white bread loaf and one dark bread loaf, you have to take the dark bread and you have to give the avid ivri the better, the better, the white bread. Or if you only have one pillow, he gets the pillow because of this. So an avid an avid ivri has to be treated very well. Avid kanani doesn't have to. It doesn't. You don't have to treat him as well. Low. So if you're not allowed to, if you're not allowed to, I'm using a double negative. If you're not allowed to not support your Evikanani, of whom it says Imach, Kosha can Bito, you certainly shouldn't not, shouldn't be allowed to not support your daughter. Meaning, if there's an obligation to support Evid Ivri, there certainly would be an obligation to to uh, to support your daughter. So Amar Rabba Barula, Rabba Barula said, "Lo nitzcha elo la dafa." So we could say where we're talking about a case where she's making so much, it's it's more than, uh, well, she's making a lot of money, a lot more than she needs for her expenses.
So really, we don't say that that the just like the father got got her money, the brothers would get it. And the only chiddush is about when she's making so much money that she's making more than what it comes. What? Okay. You want the keys? Yeah. I'm a rabba. Rabba says, "Gabra rabba Rav Yosef liyoda di ika hadafa." Is it possible that a great man like Rav Yosef didn't know this svar of hadafa? Because Rav Yosef answered, Rav Yosef answered that. Uh, It, had, it was in regard to the sons getting it. The Kamosif Tufti, yet he asked this question that, uh, or said it based on the fact that the daughter is being supported by by the brothers. And according to what you just said, the, the daughter isn't being supported. El Amarava, so Rava gives answer of Yosef Masnisen Gufa Kashle. So Rav Yosef had a different problem. There was an inherent contradiction or difficulty in the Mishnah, the Ketani, because the Mishnah on one hand said, her wages and any lost objects that she would find, even if she didn't collect it yet. So wages, we understand. She worked, but she didn't. it wasn't payday yet. But a Mitzia, a mitzia how do you collect a Mitzia? A mitzia is you find it on the street, you pick it up. So by definition, it's yours because... More chase? So what does the Mishnah mean at all when it's saying that that the, the future Mitzia that she's going to find? If she didn't find it and the father dies, the father wouldn't get it. Mitzia who are you collecting a Mitzia from? It depends if you find one. So Rav Yosef felt the Mishnah, you have to interpret the Mishnah the following way. Masi deb that her earnings are like her Mitzia, a fi, a object that she finds. Ma Mitzia, sabachaya av la'av. Just like if she finds an object while the father is alive, it goes to the father. After the father dies, she gets to keep it, even if she's being supported by the estate. So her wages, her earnings, just like when she was alive, while her father was supporting her, he would get the wages. After her father dies, she gets to keep her own wages. So we can learn from here that she does get to keep uh, her wages that she earns, even if the brothers are are, are supporting her with food and room and board and food and uh, clothing, etc., from the uh, father's estate. It marnami. We also learned Amar Rav Yehuda Amar Rav Basin Yisnos Mina Achin Masidela Atzma. Rav Yehuda said in the name of Rav that a daughter who is being uh, who's being fed and stuff supported by her brothers because the father died Masidela Atzma she gets to keep her earnings. Um, Rav Kahana. Rav Kahana says, my time, but what's the reason that uh, she gets to keep her own money and the brothers don't get it? Dixiv, the Pasuk says, osam So in regard to uh, Eved, uh, non-Jewish slaves, you can, uh, if you own an inher- a non-Jewish slave, you can inherit, your, your, you can give them over in your in, in your estate. Your, 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 your sons will get them for you as an inheritance. So the Pasuk says, osam, those slaves, Osam Livnechem, those them, those slaves, the non-Jewish slaves can be inherited, inherited by your children. But your sons are not going to inherit your daughters, meaning or her earnings. So this is a proof or the source that the, a man, when he dies, just because he, if he was alive, he'd be able to keep his, his daughter's earnings. He's not able to bequeath that to his uh, sons as part of the inheritance when he dies. Masked for Rabba. Rabba asked a question on it. Ve'ema b'pito yabasuk nosos chavosa kasim adaber. But maybe that pasuk is talking about when a daughter gets um, seduced or other knas, uh, other knas or chavala. Chavala is uh, if you'd be injured and you have to pay. So if those happen to the daughters, the sons wouldn't get that. V'chi tana deve. What? Marquis. The keys are over there. Because that's where you left them. Right,
Um, so maybe the puzzle doesn't mean that the 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 uh, salary, the wages of the daughter don't get don't get transferred to the sons. Maybe it means if the father was going to earn money from an injury that happened to the, to a daughter or a boches of gam or knas that went to the daughter, but maybe but maybe her wages do get inherited by the son. So I'm Rabbi Yosef Rachanina. Rabbi Yosef Rachanina says, we turn to Mem Gilamad Beis, Shepatza Befaneha. This is a case where the uh, she was injured, someone smacked her in the face. So the father certainly doesn't want her to... Uh, so if she'd be injured in the face, that would certainly decrease her value and her marriage prospects because you wouldn't want someone with, uh, with you know, broken nose or crooked nose, this or that. So... In that case, uh, the fa that's definitely uh, relevant specifically to the father because the since the father could sell her as an amma if she was a katana or marry her off, uh, something like that directly affects the father. So therefore, it can be uh, given to his sons as inheritance. Amar of Zera, Amar of Masna, Amar Rav. Rav Zera said the name of Masna in the name of Rav. Amila, Amar of Zera, Amar of Masna, Amar Rav. And some said Rabbi Zera, not Rav Zera, but Rabbi Zera. The article says in the footnote be, uh, that the Machlokas is at what stage in his life did he teach it? Because Amoraim in Eretz Yisrael had the title of Rabbi because they saw Tzmich in Eretz Yisrael, and, and in Bava they were called Rav. So the question is, did Rabbi Zera do this when he was in Eretz Yisrael or, or in Bava? Because uh, there was a famous word that Rabbi Zera, I think he fasted many hundreds of fasts that he should forget. He fasted a lot in general, Reb Zera, but he wanted to forget the Torah of Bavel and the way that they learned because he felt that the learning of Eretz Yisrael was better, so he wanted whatever. So the question is, so the Irish girl points out that Rav or Rebbe, the question is, did he say when he was in Bavel or when he was in Eretz Yisrael? Bas hanizonus mina achin, masidela asma, for daughters being uh, fed and clothed from the brothers, meaning from her father's estate, she gets to keep her own wages. Dixiv, as the Pesach says, and you will inherit them, your uh, your non-Jewish slaves, to your sons after you as an inheritance. So the drasha that we just said, and we asked a question on, he quoted this drasha the way that we originally had it. And your daughters don't get inherited to your sons. So... Amra Avimi Bar Papi Shakud Amra. Avimi Bar Papi said Shakud, the diligent one said, and the diligent one's name for Shmuel. Shmuel and Rav were contemporaries who argued a lot. It was Lashem Shamayim. So how come you said it in the name of uh, of Rav, but Shmuel said it? So the Gemara says Shakud Manu. Who is Shakud? The Shakud one, Shmuel. Harav Amra. But Rav is the one who said it. Reb Zera said in the name of Rav. So how come Rav Avimi is saying that Shmuel said it? So Ema Af Shakud Amra. So we have to say that Avimi Bar Papi, he heard that Rav said it. He said, oh, I also heard the same halacha from Shmuel. I mean, once I uh, told her Moshe a certain share I had heard, I heard at Kermi Avna about the shita of Reb Shlomo Zalman Orbach, about the shita, uh, about the malacha of uh, Machatech. Malacha on Shabbos of Machatech is cutting things to a, a specific size. And uh, the, the way that uh, Rav Tubi, the, the Rosh Kolel, he still is Rosh Kolel at Kirby Avna, say, he's explained a certain thing about, uh, about uh, Rabbi Shimon, let's say, paper towels that have, they have ridges, you know, so he cuts. So is it machatech when you cut them? Because you're cutting them to the same size. So Shlomo Zaman says, you don't care for them to be the same size. So just because they got manufactured that way doesn't mean that if you would cut it, not that, to, I think it was talking about paper to uh, to toilet paper in a case where there'd be some type of heter to cut it because of covered abrios. You're in the bathroom, there's no toilet paper. So it wouldn't be mechatech. You might be ripping, it might be a malach of Korea, but it wouldn't be a malach of mechatech. So this came up and I said to Rav Moshe that uh, I heard that Rav Shlomo Zaman Shita was this, and he said, oh, that my father had the same Shita. So that's what was happening over here. That with someone's in the name of Rav and he's going to say, no, Shmuel said it. To say to Shmuel, say it wasn't rejecting the fact that Rav said it. He was saying, oh, I also heard the same halacha from Shmuel. 
Amr Marbar Bar Maimar Ravashi, Marbar Maimar said to Ravashi, Hachi Amri Nahardai, this is what it said in Naharda, Hail Khosa Kavatsu Rav Sheshes. So we pass in like Rav Sheshes that uh, the brothers get the money. Rav Ashi, Amri Hail Khosa Kavatsu to Rav, and Rav Ashi said, We pass in like Rav that the that if the father died, the, the brothers do not keep her wages. And the halacha is, in fact, with Rav, that if the father dies, she uh, gets to keep her wages. So we'll leave it here. We got up to the Mishnah, and we will leave it here.